Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I am Dr. Virangi Doshi, Fellow in Vitreo Retina and Ocular Oncology and I shall take you through this month's top 5 articles. Let's start with the first article which study the effect of inflammatory potential of diet assessed by the Dietary Inflammatory Index on the pathogenesis and incidence of common age-related eye diseases like cataract, age-related macular degeneration and possibly open angle glaucoma. This study included 7,436 participants without eye disease aged 45 years and above from the prospective population-based Rotterdam study. Their baseline blood samples and dietary data were collected from which dietary inflammatory index was adapted. Every four to five years, the participants underwent extensive eye examination and it was found that 4,036 participants developed eye diseases on follow-up. A higher adapted dietary inflammatory index and neutrophil lymphocyte ratio significantly was associated with increased inflammation. It was noted that a higher adapted dietary inflammatory index and neutrophil lymphocyte ratio suggestive of a pro-inflammatory diet was associated with increased risk of cataract and age-related macular degeneration. Adapted dietary inflammatory index was not associated with open angle glaucoma. Additionally, complement component C3C and systemic immune inflammation index were also associated with increased risks of cataract and late AMD respectively. These findings thus substantiate the need for healthy lifestyle to prevent blindness. Our second article, Oaks and Derby study, a 24-month multicentric randomized double-masked sham controlled phase 3 trial aimed to study the efficacy and safety of pexetacoplan compared with sham injections in treatment of patients with geographic atrophy. 1,258 patients were randomly assigned to intravitreal 15 mg per 0.1 ml pexetacoplan monthly or every other month or sham monthly or every other month. The primary endpoint was the change in area of the geographic atrophy based on autofluorescence images from baseline to month 12. Secondary endpoints which were measured at 24 months were change in monocular maximum reading speed of the study eye, change in the mean functional reading independence score, change in normal luminance best corrected visual acuity score. Additionally, the OAK study studied change in mean threshold sensitivity of all patients in the study eye by mesopic perimetry. In OAK study, plan both monthly and every other month significantly slowed down geographic atrophy lesion growth as compared to sham injection at 12 months. In the Derby study, however, plan did not significantly slow down geographic atrophy growth as compared to sham at the end of 12 months. However, at 24 months, favorable results with plan were observed in both Oaks and Derby study. There was no difference in secondary visual function endpoints. Serious ocular treatment emergent adverse effects were reported in 1-2% to patients receiving plan. New onset exudative age-related macular degeneration was noted to develop in 6 to 13% patients receiving either dosing schedule of plan in both Oaks and Derby study, whereas in only 2 to 4% patients receiving sham injections. Thus, plan, the first treatment approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for geographic atrophy, slowed the geographic atrophy lesion growth with an acceptable safety margin. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration also approved Avacin Captard Pegol in 2023 August. In the GATHER2 trial, which was a randomized, double-masked, multicentric sham control trial, 488 patients with non-phobia involving geographic atrophy were randomly assigned to receive monthly intravitreal injection of Avacinocaptor Pegol 2 mg per 0.1 ml or sham injections between June 2020 to July 2021. The primary outcome measure was the square root transformed area of geographic atrophy based on autofluorescence images. The results showed significantly better outcomes with Avacinocaptor Pegol at the end of one year. In the post hoc analysis, it was found that the risk of loss of 15 ETDRS letters or more was greater in the sham group than the group treated with Avacinocaptor Pegol. As with plan, there was an increased risk of development of macular neovascularization at 12 months for which additional injections of antivascular endothelial growth factor were needed. 
Thus, monthly Avicenna captured pebble was well tolerated and slowed significantly slower geographic atrophy growth over 12 months, suggesting that it may potentially change the disease trajectory. Our next study is a retrospective comparative interventional analysis which evaluated changes in the best corrected visual acuity and submacular hemorrhage resolution after a single rapid subretinal displacement surgery using subretinal balanced saline solution and sterile air without the use of tissue plasminogen activator in 26 eyes from 2015 to 2021. With thick submacular hemorrhage, the patients with, who underwent a standard small gain pass planar vitrectomy with subretinal displacement using balanced saline solution with subretinal air and partial glass fluid exchange. It was noted that within one month, about 80% patients had complete subfovial blood displacement. Mean log mark best corrected visual acuity also slowed, uh, showed a significant improvement. These results were comparable with earlier studies using tissue plasminogen activator. In this study, one patient had a retinal detachment, one had macular hole, and one had vitreous hemorrhage in the study. Our next article for today studied the effects of number and presence or absence of leaking microaneurysms on diabetic macular edema and the efficacy of anti VHF therapy. 51 eyes of 47 patients treated with diabetic macular edema were administered antivascular endothelial growth factor treatment. Fundus fluorescein angiography was used to determine the number of microaneurysms and the presence or absence of leakage. These findings were also matched with the OCT maps. They then correlated the number of microaneurysms on fundus fluorescein angiography and retinal thickness on the OCT with the influence of those leaking microaneurysms in order to definitively determine the effect of anti vegf treatment. They found a positive correlation between the number of microaneurysms and retinal thickness before as well as after treatment. There was also a significant difference between mean thickness of leaking versus non-leaking microaneurysms both before and after treatment. Thus, the degree of retinal edema before treatment is associated with the number of microaneurysms and the presence of leaking microaneurysms. anti vegf treatment is less effective for focal macular edema with large number of microaneurysms which includes leaking microaneurysms. That's all for this month. Thank you for your patient listening. We shall see you next month with another set of interesting articles. Thank you.